Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Daybreak right here on Trust TV. Now it's time for us to take a look at the front pages of newspapers to see what's making the rounds this morning. Well, we'll start with Daily Trust newspaper. And the major story on the front page is talking about the elections. It says elections will hold as scheduled, Buhari assures. And riders here that says no postponement, according to INEC, and youth top registered voters. Commission begins airlift of sensitive materials. Now, details of that story can be found on page four. And um, the pictorial there on the front page was the independent, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, and um, alongside other members of the commission at the presentation of National Register of Voters um, to political parties in Abuja. U.S. Nigeria flights disrupted as American system, after American system glitch, that is on page six. Ganduji Kano will repeat 1993 presidential election feat. And you can find that on page 15. NMPP urges security agencies to go after anti-democracy democracy forces. And you can find details of that on page 14. Still looking at the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. Policy uncertainty, inflation to slow Nigeria's economic growth. And this is according to the World Bank. And it says growth will decelerate to 2.9% in 2023, and projections reflect current realities. Now, that statement is credited to experts. Details can be found on page 7. Towards the top of the front page there, don't sell your votes. General Abdul Salami charges electorate. That is on page 14. And talking security now, Kebi abduction. Parents selling properties to pay 100 million naira ransom. That is quite unfortunate. And on page five, Zezo Emir dismisses palace aid over gang rape. And uh, that's all those are the major stories on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And moving on to the Nation newspaper this morning, <coughs> we have there as the major headline, Northwest, Southwest, top 93.5 million likely voters. Um, that is coming from the briefings from INEC yesterday, giving a breakdown of all the regions and what to expect. Lagos leads with 7 million. INEC releases voters list to parties. 49.5 million men, 44.4 million women, and 37 youth registered. Um, now, this 37 youth is not disaggregated. I know the women have always been more in our electoral yeah. uh, breakdown, but this is interesting uh, to have this breakdown this morning. Boko Haram, a plot to destroy Nigeria, says Buhari. And uh, uh, taking a quote there from, from the INEC release, he said, in the last two days, we commenced the airlifting of other sensitive materials to states across the country. Already, some of the materials for 17 states in three geopolitical zones have been delivered. That's, that sounds very promising ahead of um, the February elections. And to other headlines there, APC, PCC, challenges Atiku on alleged corruption, health status. Um, to other stories, Ekiti indebted to Tinibu, says Governor Oyebanji. You will find that story in the inside page, on page three. And um, Edo, 13 train passengers still with kidnappers. Uh, to other stories there, the bottom street, bandit kill community leader, nephew, adopts four housewives in Kaduna. These are the major stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Now we'll take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning and it goes well in keeping with what we have seen so far. INEC final list, Northwest, Southwest, top 93 million voter register and Lagos has 7 million voters, Kano 5.9, Kaduna 4.3 million and INEC rules out postponement says no going back on poll timetable. And I'm um, still talking about um, the Punch newspaper. President and the vigorous gadfly. That is a story you can find on page 20 of the Punch newspaper. At the very bottom of the front page there, marketers project six-month fuel scarcity. And that is on page 17. Oh, that doesn't make interesting reading. Jailing my husband's killer will caution drunk drivers. That is according to the widow of a slain baker. 
CCTV exposes Ogun Hotel murder suspects. The story can be found on page four and pages four and five. Uh, the very right next to the masthead there, Chime Namani, others, Sean Tinubu's Inugu rally. And you can find details on page 12. At the very top of the front page, they're still talking politics. PDP seeks alliance with 11 parties. And UK shut OB's company over account issues. And that is according to a report. Details can be found on page 21. INEC can be trusted for credible poll, says Shori. And that is a story that can be found on page 13 for the details now. These are the major stories making rounds on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. And moving on to News Direct this morning. Stay staying with um, issues around the elections. Insecurity, 2023 general elections will hold as scheduled. INEC um, defies fear. Says no adjustment to timetable, postponement of polls. We have been assured by security forces, Yakubu, as Autumn appeals for extension in the collection of PVC. And to other stories there on the front page, have experienced both military civilian rules, uh, multi-party democracy in the best. I mean, multi-party democracy is the best. Um, that is coming from President Buhari. Nigerians have no business seeking greener pastures overseas. Uh, that's coming from Tinibu. And um, strong regulatory systems necessary for quality medicine, vaccines in low-income countries. This is coming from Professor Mujisola. A day a year. Pastor fakes own kidnapped, collects 600,000 ransom from members. Well, and this is taking interesting dimension. And to other stories above the name marks, we have McCordy caught jails two bankers three years for 9.4 million ATM card fraud. And Transcorp Group bags multiple awards at the 2022 Pell Awards. Um, and to other stories, we will turn Obomosha Zone to an industrial hub. And this is coming from Makinde. These are the major stories on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct. All right, next we'll take a look at the leadership newspaper and the major story. I'm still keeping with what we've seen so far. Lagos, Kanu, top as INEC releases final voters register as the 2023 elections. And it comes with riders here that says 93 million Nigerians to decide Atiku Tinubu will be others' fate. And commission recants on election cancellation postponement. NMPP seeks court order on candidates' list. Now, there's um, another writer supporting the major story on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Another story here reads ICPC Ministry gets notification of fresh corruption allegations in NMPC. And that is on page seven. Um, another headline here talking about security matters now. Bandits kill Kaduna community leader. One other abducts and abducts four housewives. That is on page 22. Commodity prices to fall amid slow global growth, and that is a statement um, accredited to the World Bank. Details of that can be found on page 24. Now, these are the major stories that made their way to the front pages of the leadership newspaper. Moving on quickly to First News newspaper this morning, we have uh, the major stories this time with the INEC releases, um, and um, here. It reads, no plans to postpone 2023 general election. Uh, registers 93.4 million voters for February. Um, and I next chair present voters register to APC, PDP, LP, and other party leaders. And to the second major headlines there, we have 2023 APC, PDP campaign spokesperson fight over Atiku Tinibu's health status. Uh, Atiku must come clean about his health condition, APC, and Atiku campaign organization fires back, says Tinibu unfit to hold office as president. Interesting banter there coming from uh, the, the front runners in the forthcoming elections. And to other um, headlines there, we have Bayelsa governor inaugurates first, first electronic filing court in Nigeria. You'll find picture of there of Governor Dury and members of the judiciary. Uh, to other stories, 2023, only Nigerians who enjoy hardship will vote for APC, says Shouri. I will make Southeast Industrial Manufacturing Hub Tinibu pledges to revitalize coal and CBN bankrupt of ideas, says Sheu Sani. And to other stories, Tinibu administration will support grassroots sport development. And this is coming from veteran Super Ego player Dan Omokachi.
That's the major story on the front page of First News this morning. All right, next we'll take a look at this Nigeria newspaper. And, of course, in keeping what we have seen, 2023 polls sacrosanct, says Yakubu Ainek Chair. And then comes with riders here that says, Commission announces 93.469 million eligible voters to participate in general elections. Now, details of that can be found on page four. Still talking about the elections, it has a story here that says, Wiki, we are ready for voting revolution. And that is on page eight. Now talking about security matters, only 20 kidnapped in Edo train attack, not 32. And that is according to Commissioner. And that can be found on page 14. At the very bottom of the front page, you can find a story that reads, You can't continue to run CBN from overseas. Pressure mounts on Emefele to resign. And you can find details of that on page 6. At the very top of the front page there, besides the masthead, Catholic bishops to Buhari use remaining four months to tackle insecurity economy. You can find details of that on page 8. Now, these are the major stories on the front page of this Nigerian newspaper. And moving on to Blueprint newspaper this morning, and quickly we will look at those stories that are not... Uh, that are different from what we have already taken from other papers this morning. Of course, the major story stays with um, the general election and INEC does intention, says February and March 11 dates irreversible. Uh, but moving on to other stories quickly, uh, train attack, a Duke government makes U-turn, says only 20 kidnapped. Uh, Nigeria has no choice but to restructure debt boarding, this according to experts. And again, hearing on Ararume's 100 billion suit over removal as NNPC chair stalled. Diri inaugurate first electronic filing, uh, filing court in Nigeria. And alcohol, smoking, radiation, major causes of cancer amongst women. This is also coming from Espat. Uh, these are the major stories on the front page of Blueprint newspaper. Um, at this point, we would now uh, move on to uh, the analysis of the major papers we have in the studios this morning. And as usual, joining us in the studio is the editor-in-chief, Deadline newspaper, Malin Nasrullah. It's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I next seem to have taken over the front pages, clearly. Um, I think um, we are now in top gears as far as the February and March elections are concerned, with um, a lift of sensitive material already completed to 17 states. And most importantly, the assurance, the reassurance, if you like, uh, that the, the dates of the elections are sacrosanct. How significant do you think these statements are in the face of um, the doubts that came up some 24, 48 hours ago over the security situation in some parts of the country? Well, uh it's like what the president said, you know, trying to reassure Nigerians that uh, elections will hold as scheduled. Mm -hmm. It's like a way of uh, dousing the tension, uh, you know, generated by, by remarks actually attributed to the INEC chairman, mm -hmm. uh, saying that uh, if the insecurity continues, then the elections may be jeopardized. Uh, jeopardized. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good that the president is now telling Nigerians and uh, the whole world that mm. uh, actually there is no cause for alarm. And mm. I think this is uh, very good uh, because so many people will now find it, uh, you know, uh, possible to continue mm. with uh, their campaign, with all the issues, not necessarily waiting for, for you know, like what, 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 what will even happen to, mm. to happen. Because uh, what the INEC chairman said, you know, you can see even from the reactions mm. so many people because we have been here before uh, in 2011 mm. uh, we had issues you know with postponement in 2015 uh, you know there the was uh, something like that so uh, because of that so many people may find it difficult to to, to actually reconcile what mm. the president said and what uh, and the, the INEC uh, mm. chairman is saying all right, well, still talking about INEC and the elections. Um, apart from the uh, assurances of the dates to carry out the election and the election must hold uh, postponement and the rest of it, the other thing that took over the newspaper headlines is the voters' register. has been released. You have 93 million voters. Um, 
or, or should I say eligible voters. Mm -hmm. And um, we're seeing from the breakdown that um, youth carry a very large chunk of, of, those, of, the, of those eligible voters that we're mm -hmm. talking about. And it has always been said to build up to this election that youth are going to be the deciding factor, they're going to make a change, the difference is going to come from them, and so on and so forth. But it's one thing to register. It's another thing for you to go out and vote. And a lot of people, of we have seen in previous elections, where when you go to polling stations, the people that you see voting there are not youth. Mm -hmm. The youth are there playing football and waiting, <laughs> and waiting for the polls to close to continue their businesses. Is, what, are we, are we, do we have any sort of assurance that things will be different this time around? Well, you know, we have always said it, that uh, the youths, uh, if you look at the numbers, mm. they're actually the deciders you know, of whoever is going to become uh, the president. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, you know, they hardly uh, take advantage of the numbers that they have. Uh, on the day of election, you see youths, you know, just moving about, you know, sitting in groups, waiting for the election results to be announced. Uh, some of them actually have no uh, uh, voters register because if all the youths, mm. uh, all the eligible youths are to have their voters card, I, I think the number mm, will certainly be, be much higher than, than what you have at the moment. And uh, another thing I find uh, interesting, you know, with the figures released by, by uh, the uh, electoral body, is the fact that, you know, for the first time, or is it for the first time that uh, women are now like yes, second? They are, not, <laughs> they are not the first, you mm. know? And uh, if you look at the numbers also, uh, only eight states, you know, have women, you know, leading uh, in terms of uh, the numbers. Navigation. In fact, in the entire 19 northern states, only Kogi state has oh, really? a little over 50 mm. percent. Mm. So maybe uh, with uh, more enlightenment, especially in this part of uh, the country, you know, there are so many women that are not being, uh, you know, taken along mm. uh, in the course of all this. And, you know, women have a very important role to, to play in all sure. this because anytime we talk about uh, poverty, for instance, you know, women are the Mind most uh, affected. And uh, we can't be talking about trying to end, uh, you know, poverty without mm. uh, carrying, carrying women them. along, mm. without ending poverty among uh, the women folk. So, uh, I think this is uh, an opportunity, you know, for especially those that uh, uh, call the shots in the northern part mm. of uh, the country, you know, to be able to uh, mobilize more women so that they would be participating in this uh, all-important uh, exercise. Mm. Uh, mm. But the youths, if they take advantage of their number, honestly, uh, they should be able to decide who who becomes uh, the next president. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are like the major stakeholders, because even if you look at uh, the life expectancy and what have you, uh, the youths are likely to be here you know, for some time, mm -hmm. because we have just a little over 5 million mm -hmm. voters that are above 70 and the like. So if they don't take advantage of this opportunity, you know, whatever happens, the implication, they will be the to be all the Bronx, mm -hmm. because like I said, they are like the ones that are going to be here for quite some time mm. uh, looking at uh, all the, the, the numbers. Interesting uh, breakdown there, um, coming in the light of the fact that in our population numbers, I think we have over 60, percent, 60 million youths, mm. and you have um, less than 35 or about 37 million here registered. So you wonder what would have happened to the nearly 20 other millions. Mm. And uh, talking about women, I was just thinking in my head, uh, could it be that um, they are already becoming fatigued, uh, you know, because f when, whenever there are election violence, they are the biggest culprits. Uh, so uh, when we militarize this, this, these elections, they are the ones who are not encouraged to come up because uh, they are usually very peace-loving. Uh, people. I hope we could do something to change it, starting with INEC, uh, because if you look at the numbers of the commissioners there on the pictures, you can just spot one of them. Maybe if we have more women representation, they will find the need to, to, to mobilize women more. To, to mobilize women more. Mm -hmm. uh, but moving away to the World Bank release yesterday, uh, initially they had told us that half of the world would be in recession. 
uh, come 2023. Now they are breaking it down uh, to regions and, of course, to countries. And um, they are telling us that policy uncertainty, inflations to slow Nigeria's growth. Uh, the uncertainty, I'm sure, will be coming from the fact that we'll be changing leadership and you are not exactly sure what, what will be retained, what would have to go, how the new leader carries uh, the opposition, because some of the arguments by the experts, uh, just to provide context for your comment, is, is the fact that um, whichever candidate wins, must understand that the other candidates have very large following. So they are a buy-in from those, the followership would be useful to galvanize the country in the parts that they want. But what do you make of this pronouncement? Well, I think it is to be expected because uh, in the presidential election, you know the president is actually serving out uh, his, term. his term. So uh, whatever happens, we are going to have a new president because mm. the, the, the incumbent is not going to be uh, mm. on the ballot. Mm. And uh, so the uncertainty is to be expected because uh, even among investors, you know, students, mm. because we don't know exactly the policy direction that mm. the incumbent mm. uh, government uh, will want to uh, pursue. So because of that, I think it's good that uh, the, the, the World Bank is bringing, is bringing this to the fore, mm. so that uh, even if we are like missing it, you know, we now have uh, a chance to go back and uh, pay attention to mm. it, uh, the, the, the attention that it actually uh, deserves. deserves. Because inflation, uh, you know, keeps rising, mm. and then nobody knows uh, how far it will go. If you look at what is happening in uh, countries like Ghana, mm. uh, if it can happen in Ghana, it can certainly happen in Nigeria. Yeah, because sometimes we have allowed, uh, is it the market forces, without any sort of uh, mm. intervention mm. from uh, the, 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 the relevant bodies. Mm. So I, I, I think, like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's good for all the uh, relevant stakeholders to key into this uh, so that uh, probably if we have had, you know, campaign based on issues, mm. on manifestos, we will mm. have known, you know, yeah. uh, the direction, the, the direction the, that the incoming or the, the people jostling to become mm. uh, president, you know, will uh, pursue in 2023. 20, uh, but mm. sadly, all the issues that they are paying attention to, you know, are things that uh, I'm not saying they are not important, but maybe not. Uh, at this time, you can see uh, we are still talking about uh, you know the uh, health, of health issues, <laughs> you know corruption and what have you. Mm. We are not saying they are not important; they are important, but that's not what Nigerians actually want, want, to, hear. To, want to hear. Mm. What we want to hear is uh, what you intend to do. For mm. instance, right now mm. we're in the middle of uh, 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 currency mm. uh, redesign, mm. uh, a major policy issue. You know, is it something that you are likely to continue, or is it something that uh, you may come up with something that is quite different, different uh, from what obtains at the moment? So mm. things like that will have given us opportunity to 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 decide mm. on so many issues, probably even on uh, the candidates that we mm. should be voting for. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, all the things that we keep hearing, you know, are stuff that you know just fit mm -hmm. into the social mm -hmm. media mm -hmm. uh, debates and what have you. Uh, let's move slightly away from, from politics and the elections. We may circle back to it, but, but for, for now, let's just move away slightly away from it and talk about security. Um, I, the, the Daily Times is reporting here that um, security surveillance along um, Abuja Kaduna Railway will go up 30.79 um, billion naira, as according to the federal government. And, um, well, most recently, the uh, train station attack in Edo State, whereby we, we have been having some, some difficulty reconciling the numbers. As we said, 32 were abducted. Now some people are saying it was 20, 20. and some people have been rescued while some are still there. I, I, say, I say rescued because it, 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 bring, it poses the question, are these people not in the same place? Were well, they not abducted by the same people? So how come some people are rescued and others are still there? I, I, can you try to make a little sense out of, out of all this? Well, you know, uh, the, the incident in Edo mm. uh, is quite different from what we experienced, you know, on the Kaduna Abuja route. Because uh, the Kaduna Abuja, in the case of the Abuja Kaduna route, you know, a train was actually stopped Stop. on its uh, track. Mm. And uh, 
you know, passengers abducted. But in this case, you know, they went to the train station. Uh, probably some of the people that they even abducted are not even passengers. Mm -hmm. Possibly okay. they have just, uh, they just escorted, so their relatives. Uh, you know, their mm -hmm. relatives or friends, you know, to uh, board the train and then they are affected. But like you said, mm -hmm. sometimes you find it difficult to, to reconcile what the security agents are actually saying. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you are able to rescue maybe a number mm -hmm. out of those that were abducted, at least you should be able to tell us what oh. happened to the others? Mm. You know, is it like, uh, uh, you know, did the gunmen succeeded in, mm. you know, dragging them through? You know, what happened to the gunmen? How were you able to rescue, rescue this us. without, you know, uh, being able to do the same mm. for, for all the others? Mm. And, you know, sometimes uh, what actually happens, uh, maybe the, the gunmen themselves may find you unsuitable maybe for the long trek and what have you, and they may decide to abandon you. And in the end, what do the security agents tell all Nigerians? You have been rescued. When in actual sense, you know, you, you, you are able to escape on your own without mm. any inter intervention. Mm. Mm. But I thought what happened on the Kaduna Abuja route, you know, would have served as a lesson mm. uh, to not only uh, the passengers, but even the security, relevant mm. security mm. Uh, organizations, because uh, the fact that it happened in Kaduna, you should know that, you know, it can happen anywhere. Mm. See what happened in the case of uh, the Chibok mm. school attack. It happened in Borno State. Several, mm. Now it's happening all Everywhere. over mm. the place. So mm. you should have used that, you know, to, to plan mm. uh, against all these uh, criminal elements. Mm. Because uh, anytime they see, you know, uh, some of them succeed in somewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, it would be like a template, a template mm -hmm. for them to, to, to continue. So uh, I think it will be good anytime something like this happens for the uh, uh, authorities, you know, to be able to tell us exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not good to say uh, 30 people were kidnapped and, and then before you know it, uh, you have reviewed the number to say uh, only 31 20. because. Mm -hmm maybe it has uh, to do with even our manifest. Mm. We don't even know mm. how many people want to board the train mm. and then maybe Absolutely. our incident reporting uh, yeah. processes mm. are even faulty because is there any opportunity for those whose uh, loved ones were affected, you know, to even report it That's right. so that you can follow up on, mm. on it to see exactly the number of people missing. Mm or uh, unaccounted for. Mm. You, you basically just hit the nail on the head. I, I was saying to Usena the last time uh, that uh, there's, there's a saying in the local parents, uh, you hear the worry people say, these people don't treat us. Mm. Uh, because the, when you listen to the reporting, like you rightly said, the incident reporting process, is just completely faulty. Uh, to think that it took us almost eight months to kickstart the Kaduna, you would think lessons mm. have been learned. Now, there are no even CCTV camera reviews to suggest even the, the nature and the pattern of the operation. This happened around 4 a.m. in a rainforest, in a community where it's not as, as wide open as the north. Uh, you barely would travel for five, ten minutes before you run into Igwebe. is a place I'm very familiar with. It's basically a five, ten minute drive from Irumi, another five, ten minute drive. So the, all the communities are, how would these people have traveled for this long? Mm. And you keep coming to the media to give us the impression that you are in a hot chase, you have mobilized all kinds of people, <laughs> jungle, whatever. And the people you pick up are people who basically escaped from, yeah. from this, and, and you come up to take glory. So. Um, I hope there are some kind of committees that would um, take a second look at what these people are saying and do something holistic. In other countries, we have dedicated police people, as we have for the, for the airlines. You have their own people who understand the nature of crime that can take place on those corridors and basically work to forestall it, rather than have conventional police who have no, no knowledge of, or training of how these things are done to, to police this corridor. But still staying with security is the issue as reported uh, by Daily Trust, of KB adoptions, parents selling properties to pay 100 million ransom. We know the implication of this. We ran a report last week, uh, Ibrahim, mm -hmm. of how the recovered victims of the Kaduna train attack are practically wallowing in poverty. They sold everything mm -hmm. to pay for ransom. Some lost their job for the, the long stay in the adoption. We are seeing a repeat with the KB parents selling virtually everything to raise a hundred million ransom. 
what can be done, you know, to, to salvage the plight of these people? Well, I don't think the, the, the government, you know, has done uh, what we have expected, mm. you know, of it. Because uh, the Yawari incident didn't happen uh, last week or mm. yesterday, you know. It happened for uh, quite a number of uh, months now. Mm. And uh, we are still talking about people in captivity, mm. you know. We are not hearing anything from the security agents, from the government, about the efforts being made, mm. you know, to, to ensure that they are freed, they are released, you know, to their loved ones. But we are talking about the fact that even their parents are still looking for what to do, mm. making contacts, trying to get money, you know, to, to, to be able Rich. to do this. And one thing that keeps, you know, bugging my mind is how are we, you know, or how do these criminals, you know, succeed mm. in, in, in taking delivery of all this, you know, cash? Mm. And then somehow this same money will find its way back to the society. Mm. And then we cannot trace this. Trace. Honestly, this is, this is quite unfortunate. I'm not saying that the security agents are not trying. But honestly, uh, no matter how hard you are trying, I need to see some results mm. you know, for me to be able mm. to appreciate. Mm. And uh, it's also quite unfortunate that all the, the, the parents that are affected you know, have been like left on their own to to, Absolutely. to, to carry their, to bear their burden, mm. which the state uh, shouldn't do, especially mm. at a time like this. Uh, so many people are being pushed, you know, into to poverty. Uh, because if you look at the economy, you know, in the rural areas, it shows that uh, maybe we are not even capturing it the mm. way we are supposed to do, mm. because it shows that somehow you know, we have like uh, a functional economy in that, you know, uh, wrong, mm. lower rung of the mm. society mm. because uh, people being able to even meet uh, all these uh, demands for yes. ransom and what have you. But right now they have reached, you know, a tipping point. Breaking point. They, 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 they are no longer able to do all this. Mm. And then uh, all the criminals are still, uh, you know, moving I'm about really. Uh, after some lull in in the attacks, mm. you know, we are now back at it. Mm. Probably that's even that even explains why Anik uh, came up with uh, the statement yes, that I'm, you yeah, know discussing all the, the 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 controversy because uh, gradually you know we are going back to 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 a very difficult time, especially mm. for uh, mm. people in the rural areas. Interesting insights there from. Uh, analyst, um, Malin Nasrallah, but um, rather than sign him off, I've just got words from my producer that we'll be keeping him, um, that is taking him by surprise himself. <laughs> uh, he'll be part of a larger conversation, I can assure you, so we will not be saying goodbyes. Um, we will take a short breather and return. <laughs> Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.